Welcome back to another tutorial on Sequence Generator Pro. In this one we're going to look at plate solving. Plate solving in SGP is used for a number of different purposes. One could be framing. For instance, I want to center this galaxy and I can right click and say center here. In another case, I might have a precise coordinate that I've already decided and want to make sure that the telescope is pointing there at the beginning of a sequence and also after a meridian flip. So how to do it and, and how to set it up and the sort of things that trip it up and how to overcome them. Plate solving isn't perfect. It's remarkable that it works at all. And the nice thing is a lot of them are free. You set up the plate solvers either in the equipment profile manager or in the control panel if you're in the middle of a sequence. Under here, under the plate solve tab, you've got no plate solver, pinpoint, plate solve to astronomy.net and ASTAP. Pinpoint is a paid program and plate solve I've used in the past as well. This is a freebie one, although with not so much success as Pinpoint in my estimation. And lastly is ASTAP, which is a fairly recent addition. Again, a free one that seems to be quite fast and accurate. And I skipped over one in the middle, which was called astrometry.net, which is an online process, which uses the internet to upload an image, solve and send back the coordinates. But typically what we do is we use this one as what they call a fallover because it's an all sky solve rather than one which is targeted. And it's called a blind solve or an all sky solve. And the difference between a blind solver and some of these others is these need a guiding hand. They need to be told roughly what the image scale is and roughly where in the sky you're pointing. And the blind solve basically says, I know nothing apart from the image and it works it out for itself, but it takes much longer to do it. There's a couple other things when you're doing centering as a general principle is you can choose how many times to try and nudge it into position. My mount's fairly good and I only have two nudges and I'm normally within 10 pixels. So I've set the error to being less than 50. If you have a, a less than perfect mount, you may have to increase this. And although I don't have a rotator, I want to be at least warned that my camera is at the wrong rotation angle. So I set mine to three degrees and in my equipment tab, I have a manual rotator, which is me to make sure that the camera's in the right orientation. And after meridian flip in the rotator section, you can also make it ambiguous by 180 degrees. So you don't have to turn the camera around 180 couple of things before we leave this page. Use a filter. This is for the plate solving exposure and typically I use the luminance filter which is nice and transmissive so they don't need long exposures. The exposure time I normally set around 10 seconds and I normally bin two by two. There's a couple other things that help the solver. In the camera tab it's worthwhile making sure that the image scale is set correctly for the imaging that you're doing. If not, that can also confuse matters because that can be used to auto-populate the, the hint for what, what you're pointing at and, and roughly what the image scale is. And that also applies if you want to do a frame of focus image and then plate solve it, is to use the same binning as in the plate solve tab. I found that makes it more reliable. So to set these things up, let's have a look at our control panel again and on the plate solve tab. And let's first of all take a look at pinpoint. With a 10 second exposure, you don't typically pick up the fainter stars. To avoid unnecessary effort and also to make it more reliable, I typically limit it to magnitude 10 stars. I normally bin two by two for the same reason and a reasonable exposure of 10 seconds is sufficient. Bearing in mind that I'm only typically taking two exposures in total, so not a huge amount of time. In the settings, basically, you have to tell it where are the catalogues. There are two main catalogues that I use with Pinpoint. The general star catalogue, which is this one here, and one of the naval database ones, which I use for when I have a very narrow field of view. And if you look at the Pinpoint website, Bob Denny gives the latest recommendations for which catalogue to use in which circumstances. And if this isn't pointing at the right catalogue, it will fall over. So you hit the browse button, you look at your catalogues folder and you 
or wherever you stored it and you choose the right catalogue. On the other ones, plate solve 2, again you have binning and an exposure and also you have something called max regions. So this basically reduces the scope of what it's looking for. So if you're in approximate area you can reduce the number of regions to a couple of hundred. If you really don't know where you're going, you only know which quarter of the sky you're using, then you'd have to do max region. Again, pinpoint and plate sol 2 need a hint, need a leg up in order to say whereabouts in the sky to make their life easier and for them to work effectively. There's a button on the right hand side here, which we haven't looked at yet, which appeared on both, called blind settings. And this is, this is the blind solver. And there are two settings on this. You can either choose the net, which is basically using the internet, or you can do local astronomy, where in effect the files and the application that sit on the net are stored on your computer. And I'll show you how to install those in just a moment. On Plate Solve 2, when you look at the Settings tab, it comes up with a lot more detail than the Pinpoint one. There are a couple of things to watch out for. First thing to do is check your catalogues are correct, and that's under the File menu. In this case, the two catalogues that it's looking for, UC, AC3 and APM, are both present and correct, and it knows where the directories are, hence the little word Status OK here. If not, you have to find them by selecting the directory. In terms of parameters, this does have a few parameters you can fiddle with. If you do View, Parameters, there's another little box that comes up filled with the numbers. The catalogue you can choose here. You can also choose a minimum star size and that helps you distinguish stars from hot pixels. So I've got three pixels. And a few other things in regard to how distorted can it be and so forth. I'm going to hit default values and hit OK. Good starting point. And I think the edit parameters box brings up the same dialog, if you're wondering. And lastly, ASTAP. So ASTAP has the same regions thing as before, so a couple hundred regions, binning two by two, which incidentally is advised if you're taking uh, colour images with a CFA type sensor because the sensor has different filters on each pixel and it can create a problem with trying to work out star centroids so it just helps to bin it. And on the settings tab brings up something very different. It actually brings up the application itself but if you look carefully you can't really see any settings. They're actually hiding under this sigma button here and what it does is it brings up everything. If I click on the Alignment tab, then you can see these are the settings for the actual astrometry. And again, imaging stars less than 1.5 pixels, that's what I would use to filter out stars from hot pixels. And a few other things, you can also do calibrating if you want, um, if you have a bad gradient or you have a lot of dark noise. You can also limit the number of stars it's trying to do it, and you can also change the sampling if you wish by basically binning the image. So you can bin it here or bin it when you actually physically take the exposure. So I'm just going to shut that down for a second. I'm going to leave it on our step, and I'm just going to plate solve this image. So I'm going to right click and hit plate solve. Now it's got a hint for RA and DEC already in here because it's come in from the telescope or from the picture itself. You typically do not have those set to blank, but if you did set them to blank, it is possible sometimes to type in the name of an object, such as M106, and it will populate those these two numbers here. So that sometimes helps you get in the right ballpark. You've got solve and blind solve buttons on here, so what happens here, because I've set it up in the dialog, if I hit solve, it'll try and do the, the, the quick one. And if the quick one fails, it will then automatically do the blind solve as a backup. The image scale, it's picking up in this instance from the image. If not, it would be working it out using your camera and telescope information on the 
control panel setup page, which I showed you here. So there's the camera, the pixels here, and so forth. So let's go back to this. So if you solve an image, off away it'll go and do it. And when it comes back with the answer, it gives you an option. So it's given a confidence of 100, which means it's pretty good. It's given you the angle, which is useful, plus the RA and deck. And it says, use these results as the reference image for target. So this is where I use it. If I'm manually framing something, in this particular case, I don't want the galaxy in the middle because I want to pick up this fainter galaxy over here. So I've deliberately offset it. But the initial target coordinates that I used in the Sky X picked up the center of this galaxy. So now what I can do is decide I want to center here um, visually, get the, a quick and dirty image on the screen. That's how I want the orientation and the framing. And then plate solve it as I've just done and then say, use these results as a reference image for target and off it goes. And if there was more than one target, it would listen down here and you could choose the target and hit OK. And now if I go into the sequence and look at target and look at its coordinates, those coordinates have been populated in there, which is useful. Very helpful when you don't have a central object. Now there's a number of images loaded here. And the reason I've loaded these is they all have different issues when it comes to plate solving. This one here of Caroline's Rose, which is a loose cluster, is perhaps the easiest to solve. Plenty of stars, not too densely populated, and some bright ones. That's very quick to solve. More tricky is something like this one. This is a much higher magnification shot, and the stars are very faint. This is a very long exposure. If I look at the Fitz header, I think it's... Uh, 600 seconds, something like that. It's, a, it's significant. And the problem being is that with the 10 second exposures I'm using for plate solving, it just simply won't pick up the stars. So the answer then is to limit the magnitude and increase the exposure, increase binning, and make sure you use a clear filter. Other problems sometimes occur with things like this, which is everyone's favorite except when it comes to plate solving and focusing, which is a globular cluster. The sheer number of stars in that middle confuse it. And the trick again is to think about this. If you scroll back the histogram so only the brightest stars show, that should be possible to plate solve. And that's the answer. Limit the magnitude of the stars that the plate solver is trying to do. Another one that's more tricky is this one here. This is the Orion constellation on its side. So that's the belt, that's the sword, and the, um, the bow is up here. Now this is a wide field shot. It's got significant sky gradient, and you typically will have difficulty trying to plate solve this simply because it's, the scale is so wide and it's got so many stars potentially in that area. We can give it a go and see what happens. So it says doesn't know what the RA and deck is because I've manufactured the image. So if I type in M42, so it's populated M42 RA and deck in there, which is nice. I haven't got a clue what the scale is. Um, let's put something in like five arc minutes. Um, yeah, about five up minutes. Let's try that. And off it, will, off it will go and try and solve it. Probably fail. But whilst it's doing that and probably not doing it, I would say you should be able to frame this manually. You do not need pixel perfect centering on an image such as this simply because the scale is so broad. And you should be able to just use ordinary slew uh, on the telescope and it should be accurate enough for what you need. And even if you had, you know, a 10 arc minute error between images, it would only show up as a very narrow border around the sides. Well, I left it going for a bit and it's still <laughs> trying. So what I'm going to do is hit abort. Before finishing off though, I need to explain how to install the local astrometry server. This has been made much easier by Andy Galasso, who's done a web page with an installer. 
You can do it manually if you look at the astrometry.net webpage, but this is much easier. On his home page, there is a line about the fifth one down that says ANSVR, and that's the one you need. And it brings up a nice web page that explains exactly how to do the installation, starting with his program at the top here, going through all the pages as to how it's set up, and then when the program automatically runs, it wants to download catalog information, but it only does so um, depending on what type of focal lengths and pixel sizes you have. So you need to have your field of views for your shortest and longest combination at hand and set them to 20% of the minimum and maximum as explained here. Once you've done that and hit the word start, you get a very primitive DOS-like screen and it starts downloading things. The reason it just doesn't download a catalog um, is because it's trying to minimize the amount of catalog space that's occupied on the hard drive and the amount of time for downloading, which can be quite significant. Once it's done that, it comes up with the settings. I leave them typically with their default settings. I might change the timeout, which at the moment is set to 480, but apart from that, it normally always works. So if it doesn't break, I won't touch it. And scrolling down a bit further, it explains what to do in SGP to set it up. So when you go into the plate options and choose the, the local astrometry.net, you need to go into the settings. And in the older versions of SGP, you have to type in some numbers or you just type in the local one. And in the other settings, you put in this web page address here. So again, go through the instructions, they're very explicit and there's not much for me to do other than say thank you very much to Andy for making my life a lot easier. So having done that we can then move on to closing remarks. So there you have it, a number of different alternatives and a number of different ways of doing things. One of the things I do enjoy about Pinpoint and ASTAP is that it allows me to do unattended imaging. I can populate my coordinates from an image. I can slew it around a bit to get the centering just the way it wants. I can plate solve it, find the coordinates, populate the target in the sequence, and know that before and after a meridian flip, it'd be absolutely perfect. But if and only if I've set it up in the system. So under control panel and telescope, auto meridian flip, and look at the settings, you need to say auto center after meridian flip, otherwise it will only do the slew and not the centering again. So I think that's probably sufficient for today. Thanks for watching.